Hello and welcome. This is the Appendicular Skeleton Part 1. Now, if I haven't explained to you before what the Appendicular Skeleton is, it's basically the arms, legs, shoulders, and hips. In other words, it's the pectoral girdle, which includes your, uh, uh, your clavicle and your scapula, basically your collarbone, your shoulder blade, and your arms, and then the pelvic girdle which includes your hips and legs and feet and so on and so forth. The opposite of that is the, or the other part of the skeleton is known as the axial skeleton which includes the skull, the spine, the ribs, sternum, and the last part of the spine called the sacrum and coccyx. Now, the way I've done it in this class is I've given you this sheet here that outlines the different parts that you need to know on the bones and the markings on those bones. Now this is not by any means all of them, but on this sheet in the capital letters or in all caps are the bone names and then with capital and lowercase here and indented in on each one you can see the markings that go with each of those. So let's start here at the top. The first bone is the clavicle and the clavicle is your collarbone. Uh, on this model right here, is the t this is the top of a skeleton here. You can see the spine, the head's removed here. This is the clavicle, and it attaches to the, uh, to the sternum right here on this side. Uh, the book refers to it as being an S-shaped bone. If you look from the top, it's sort of S-looking, kind of curves in like that. And it makes its other attachment over here on the scapula, which is your shoulder blade. And that's what makes up what's called the pectoral girdle, which supports and holds your arm, attaches the arm to the body. So clavicle is the first bone. The next bone here we're going to look at is a bone known as the scapula. The scapula, its nickname is shoulder blade shoulder blade and I guess it does kind of look blade like or whatever but uh, the shoulder blade now looking here there's a few features that I've asked for you to know okay at the top here we have superior angle now looking from a posterior or backside view of this bone you can see that there's an angle at the top and at the bottom. And logically speaking, this is the superior angle because superior is a word that means above. If you need a refresher on the uh, on the term superior, inferior, anterior, dorsal, ventral, things like that, uh, you can watch one of my other videos explaining orientation in the body. But this is the superior angle. Down here would then logically be the inferior angle. So that's the first two on here. Superior angle an inferior angle. Now, moving out to the side are the next three, acromion, coracoid, and glenoid. Okay. Now, to describe the difference, the word process, process can mean a lot of different things, you know, but in this case it means something that juts out of bone in some way, something that sticks out or sticky outy thingy of bone here. So this huge one out here is called the acromion process. And in most cases, and I really can't think of very many exceptions, if there's a process sticking out of bone, it's because there is a, uh, there's a muscle or more than one muscle that it connects to. So this is the acromion process. Uh, up here is the coracoid process. And then this is the glenoid fossa. Uh, the acromion process is what attaches to that first bone I showed you. It attaches to that to the clavicle, and it makes the AC joint of the shoulder. That stands for acromio for acromion, and then clavicle is uh, the C stands for clavicular. So altogether, AC is an abbreviation for the acromioclavicular joint between those two. Now down here, this is the glenoid fossa. Now fossa is a term that means shallow depression of some kind okay now this glenoid fossa is the is the part that makes your true shoulder joint that's where your arm connects you have a ball and socket joint this is the humerus this is the arm bone and it attaches to here and then rotates back and forth so on and so forth like that okay but that's the glenoid fossa coracoid process acromion process superior angle, inferior angle of this bone, which is known as the scapula. Now, 
The next bone we're going to look at is the humerus. The humerus is your upper arm bone. Okay, so it's got uh, all kinds of different markings and whatnot on your sheet. I've got like 13 of them that, that I wanted you to identify or so here. So we'll start at the top. Tubercle. Okay, I've got a greater and a lesser tubercle here. There are two different bone chunks. See, there's a big bone chunk and then there's a little bone chunk right here. The greater, the big bone chunk is the greater tubercle. Now that hole's not supposed to be there. It's just there was, there was a piece of metal going through that held this skeleton together. And this little one is the lesser tubercle. And tubercle is just another word for bump. Okay, there's lots of words for bump that you'll find out in here. And again, like every other process, like everything else that sticks out of bone, they're there so a, a muscle can attach in most cases. Between them, there's this indention, and you can see that going through here. This is the intertubercular groove. Intertubercular groove. Okay, so lesser, greater, intertubercular groove. Now you can see there's this rounded portion right here on the end. That's where your shoulder joint forms. Now the shoulder joint itself has a name, and I'll see if I can move in on this so you can see it. It's the glenohumeral joint. The glenohumeral joint because it's a joint between the glenoid fossa, again of the scapula, and the head of the humerus. So glenohumeral joint. Now this is the head and it's rounded. It gives your shoulder a great range of motion uh, and uh, meets up in there and it moves around in that space. Now with this bone, and I, not every other bone is like this, this one gives you two different necks. Right beneath this head here is an indented space and that is the anatomical neck. It's the anatomical neck because it's directly beneath the head of this bone. Now there is also a surgical neck to this bone where the wide part of the bone called the epiphysis meets the long part of the bone called the diaphysis. And this is called the surgical neck. The surgical neck. This is most often where this bone is broken, whether it's pushed broken or twisted broken, or it's uh, you know or pulled in some cases. This is the surgical neck. Um, the long part of the bone here is called the shaft of the bone. Uh, I also gave you another term here called diaphysis. Diaphysis. Um, and then we're going to get to the distal end of this bone. The distal end of this bone has uh, a couple different features, and some of these are palpable. Palpable is a fancy word that means, hey, you can feel it. You know, you can palpate this in your body. This is the medial side or the inside of your elbow, and if you feel the inside of your elbow right here, you can feel that bump right there. That's called the medial epicondyle because it's closer to the midline of your body. And then out to the side here, is the lateral epicondyle because it is just exactly on the opposite side of that. Okay, it's further from the midline. Now, there's some indentions here we need to take a look at. There's an indention here because the way that this makes the joint uh, with the elbow here is you have the ulna that kind of covers it and surrounds it. It makes a hinge with this. Now this indention fits perfectly a part of the, the uh, ulna called the coronoid process and this indention is known as the coronoid and you see how it dips in there, coronoid fossa. On the posterior side of this is this huge indention back here, also a fossa. This is the olecranon fossa and what fits up in there is a part of the ulna called the olecranon process, which we'll look at at the next video. So that pretty much, it looks like I skipped one here, I need to go back to that. Halfway down the shaft here, halfway down the shaft is a, is, a, is a little raised ridge or bump on the opposite side of the head. It's called the deltoid tuberosity. Tuberosity, just again, another word for bump, okay? Uh, deltoid tuberosity here and that's where your deltoid muscle of your shoulder attaches if you feel your shoulder here on the end right there okay 
and you lift your arm to the side, you can feel that muscle flex. That muscle has its insertion or it connects right here so that when it contracts, it lifts your arm out to the side. Okay, now I think I've covered everything. Sorry about that. So that's the clavicle, scapula, and humerus in part one.